What's up, y'all? What's up, Twitch? What's up to the YouTube viewership? I appreciate all you guys for checking out the Needed Podcast. I'm here with my guy, Gene. Yes, sir. This is a huge week because the biggest story so far, obviously, this week is the club series. There's six teams that's down to the final four. Yeah. It's a lot of new booties out there that's made a live event yeah. and a lot of OGs that's made live events, too. Yeah. So that's pretty much been the biggest story so far in this week in Madden. We've also had a lot of NFL action. Definitely. We also had some some controversial things in the Madden scene. But uh, first we got to talk about, because there's a lot of new young youth coming up in the Madden game. Okay. We'll talk about, a lot of people have asked me advice for the first big time, or the first time you had to play a big game. What was your f- biggest game you played, like the first time you remember? The first big game? Um... My first big game, I think it was in where it was in Virginia mm-hmm. and uh um it was a group called ABC. These kids, Sandman, Realist, Champ, they were scary. Mm-hmm. They were scary and I played a few big games out there. It was my first time. Um played some guy named Hova, his offense was ridiculous and yeah. ended up playing Realist. Rillis was my first big game to see where I was, and he didn't know anything about me. And, Mm -hmm. of course, I knew about him or whatever, and that was my first big game. And how did I prepare for it? Um, I don't know. We from Philly. It's kind of different. Like, like it's hard to, like, like get scared of somebody or, you know, this and the third. So it was like – well, I, I believe in myself, so I'm here. So yeah, for just sure. try to take it to him. That's the only th- only way I can say it. The biggest advice I gave is that it's just a game, first yeah. of all. First yeah. and foremost, that's ultimately the main. No matter how much money you're playing for, it's really it's still a game. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the second thing is that the guy you're playing is just as nervous as you. Yeah, you know it's not like it's not like he does this every day. You know it's yeah. not like these get, these kids go to live events every day. Yeah, even for you know Skimbo or, or Kiv or Prime people that's been there a million times, they still nervous. Yeah. You know because they still playing for a lot. Yeah. So if you get to a point where you feel nervous, you just gotta remember that this person is in the same predicament that you are. Yeah. And so you got you know just deal with that the way you want to. And to me. Playing my friends in the neighborhood was was always more – always had my heart beating more yeah. than playing. They yeah. even play on the lives. Even playing my friends online, you know, like I never wanted to lose to my friends. Yeah. More than I, more than I wanted to win, you know, leaderboard games or even in some of these live events games, I never wanted to lose to my friends because those are the people that, you know, at the end of the day you're going to measure yourself against. Yeah. You know, you don't want to grow up, you know, because those are the people you're probably going to know for the majority of your life and you don't want to have, have them I don't, don't hear that. I, I still hear about how I lost to some guy I lived up the street when in the third See? grade and I – it's like, oh my goodness! I, yeah. I hate hearing that. That's that's more pressure than anything. I tell people, when you get to that stage or when you get to a big game, just be yourself. Whatever you whatever you practice to that point, don't go in there and try to like look at other people and and still this this that and the third. Once you're there, just do you. If if you was the player to slow it down, don't go in there trying to speed it up. If mm-hmm. you was the player that's sp- um speeding it up, don't go out to slow it down. Just just be you at that moment, and everything else to take care of itself. If it was meant to, if you was meant to win, you was meant to win. If you was meant to lose, you was meant to lose. But as long as you do you, you'll be comfortable. You can sleep at night. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I want to go through and take a look at some of these new booties that are in here, and some of the old guys that are too. Got you. So, Dre, if you can bring this up, this Madden League Ops. Oh shoot, I forgot. This is the Minnesota Vikings. This yeah. is their final. This guy down to the final four, Walla Walla, is Ryan Robert. Okay. He was able to beat Winko in the game we're going to talk about in a minute. Gotcha. And play Jay Wolfman, Blair Walsh Project, who's been on Twitter, has been a mutt guy for I've seen a while. Plenty yeah. Of times. Tay 99 Tay. Never See, honestly, I don't know really any of these guys. I, I haven't seen that name. <laughs> you know, haven't really played any of these guys either. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely um, looking like Ryan Roberts to win, win right that's now. What, that's how you feel? Absolutely how I feel. I mean, but Ryan could play a game where he's just terrible. Like he can play a game where he just looks terrible. It's just it's pretty much how is how he's always been. I, you know. But then he can play a game where he looks like damn, he got the most prolific offense or defense that I've ever seen. Yeah. But like I said that for all these guys is going. I don't know. All these guys gonna be the first time they ever under. Every time they got the headset on and all that, and because there's so much spotlight around that for the last three years, the MCS being so big, I know these kids are gonna be. Nervous is going to be something that they've looking forward to and they've really strived to get to the last yeah. three years, you know. And 
And so they're going to be excited to be there. I know Minnesota is in Mall of America yeah. in the middle of that. So that's it's going to be tons of people. It's probably one of the bigger live events that any teams throw. So that's yeah. going to be even more added pressure. Yeah. I don't know. Ryan's probably been there for the last two years yeah. playing in that, in that competition at the mall. So definitely has all the experience. You know, so, I mean, I, without a doubt, he's probably the, the he, obviously the heavy favorite in this four. Yeah. Probably the most one-sided club series group that I've seen so far is Ryan right here with this one. So, I mean, that, I got to vote for him to go ahead and take that. Gotcha. But we'll see how he shows up. Like I said, sometimes he shows up real bad. And, you know, he's a guy where I've always played in the past is I can count on him to make a mistake. There's yeah. people you play like that, you know, like, all right, this guy's going to make a mistake. Yeah, you're going to do but something. But then there's people – that, you know, that you're going to play that. This guy's not going to make a mistake, so yeah. I got to play perfect. You yeah. know? But Ryan was always somebody that I uh, – You know he's going you know to do something he has no business doing one, at least one time. Yeah, for sure. But that, that's the Vikings. Got you. So I would say, obviously, he's the favorite on that one. Thing. And then the next – the Texans. This is a really, really tough, uh, tough group right here. I know over here, I don't know – who these guys are, I know. I heard one is Cassanta and one is CJ. Okay. So I'm assuming this one down here, one of these dudes is Cassanta and one is CJ. Yeah. I know CJ is tough. I know, I, I mean, he's been to a lot of little events. Yeah. He was at the boot camp I doing DC in the beginning of the year, the was very he? beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, I mean, yeah, and I learned a lot from him too in DC. So, he, you know, he's, so he's ready to play for sure. Gotcha. Cassanta's been around Twitch for, for freaking yeah. since, since I've been around Twitch, yeah. really. And on the other side, we got Bob Marley. I mean, Bob Marley, I mean, the guy we all all been in Twitch for a long time. And then we got the squid. That's Joe Rice. That's that's Joe Rice? That's Wesley. That's Joe Rice. It's squid man, season. They, they change names every year. They man. change names every year. <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody has the pride to play under their own name. Man. I mean, and, 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 and me and Skimbo talk about this all the time, right? It makes sense for him to not play under his own name because okay. this – if you Bazooka Larry, you know, some little kid playing, you playing, ooh, Skimbo, right? Yeah. Oh, he running bunch and he flipping it. Now yeah. you think, oh, that must be really tough, so I'm going to go ahead and you're use gonna it. You're going to copy. I get it. But if you're playing some random name, you're never going to think that. Yeah. You know, so it makes sense for, for Skimbo to do it. But for these kids, I don't man, come on. I, they change names every, I don't know who I'm playing. I don't know who who's who anymore, but Bob for Marley. Sure. It did not play him in 2017 when I, I, when I was, like, awful and he beat me in the first round. He beat you? Yeah, he, yeah. Oh, I, I think that's Bob that's Marley. Who, that's who he flooded you? Yeah, yeah. He, be, he beat the heck out RG of RG said it was like seeing his who superhero get beat yeah, up. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. It was awful. It was the, it was over in the second quarter. It was, Damn, over. It so was yep, awful. That's Bob. That's saying? Bob, but Bob's yeah. definitely a, a guy that obviously been around Twitch and everything. Definitely played. He's a, a hell of a Fortnite player. Got you. So – Probably rooting for uh, Bob down there, but that's a good group. You know, obviously Joe Rice is the favorite. I mean, he's a nerd. He's probably talked to the least women out of this group. <laughs> Joe, Rice, <laughs> Joe Rice does. I mean, he's a bad nerd. Yeah, and he's definitely a good player. He's around good people. You know, I, I mean, a lot of men is you as good as the company you keep. Honestly, yeah. and and Wesley's definitely a good player, and uh, he he's playing really well this year. I think I only played him one time okay. on the leaderboard. He beat me and. Uh, I but you know what? It's the, they keep they creep up with the name. They I, creep up with. The I had name. no clue that was Joe Rice. I know I I knew Bob. I seen these two play, but I didn't know them personally. But I had no clue that was Joe Rice. No, See, none. A lot of times people creep up with the name. Like you get and you load up in a game, not really necessarily the generated name. That's yeah. the Xbox generated. Because then you're like, all right, that's a creep. Yeah. But some of these kids that have these random names, you know, they creep up because you sit back in your chair like this. But if you know who you're playing, then you sit up a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah, another yeah. reason for a creep. <laughs> You know, when they, I, just, they, you know what I think it's Twitter. I just think everyone, because y'all get treated to a higher standard. Like, I, I, someone beat you by accident. Oh, yeah, it's, it's on rough. Twitter. It's rough. It's on Twitter. I, I couldn't imagine going through that. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. It's like, but that's like, but I feel like you also have an advantage when you play on your own name. Yeah. Because people get, people play different. Yeah. I've always said this a million times that people play super different when they play problem. When Man, I watch him play these the kids, problem just because his name is on yes. the screen, like because I'd be so mad because problem is trash and he just <laughs> been, and yo know, he and people just beat themselves so much, like he's already good enough to beat you anyway. But people just go down there and lay down. They just say, "All right, go ahead, you got it, dude. Your problem. Oh my God, I'm glad to be playing you." And then just and yeah. there's people that people that I see play that's really not that bad to be doing the stuff they do, you know. I'm a big believer, man. Make somebody beat you, don't beat yourself. Man, man I watch I watch his streams and I see some people literally just do too much because it's problem. Yep. Like they just go in there first drive, fourth and twenty, and they just treat it like it's the fourth quarter and they down four. And yep. I'm like, 
come on, can you not do this? And yep. they just end the game, first quarter, out yep. of nowhere. Yep. Always happens. So, yeah, but like I said, these are all creeps of them and then Bob. Yeah. But uh, and he actually be still, look like he be still. You yeah, know, young yeah. boy still. Yeah. He's been playing for a long time. So. Still is. Yeah, I can't but, wait to see that match. Yeah, so we'll see what's I don't know how do you, if these are exact matchups. I think they cross match. The one seed PS4 got plays the two you. seed Xbox. Okay. But I mean, we'll obviously see. in this group you got I got to go with Joe Rice I and mean, he's been playing the game the most and he's definitely prepared, you know, and so he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on in that group. Yeah. So we got Ryan and Joe Rice in the next group. That's already two tough tough competitors in the first two groups that, that are shown here. Yeah. Then we got to go to the Steelers. Man, I'm I'm disappointed in what I'm oh man. The Steelers, I, I, I can honestly tell you, the Steelers got to be one of the most loaded uh, club this, series. This is, man. Other than the PS4 side, I will tell you, after seeing all this, I'm getting me a, a Xbox controller converter. PS4 is, you guys, I, I will never hear the argument that this system is even remotely close to Xbox. They are awful over there. It's, ter- it's hilarious. Because the PS4... It's just I I mean respect to all you elite players and Vontes and Lord. respect to you guys man, but this is just chaos. Obviously chaos, chaos. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying he's playing really well right now, so yeah, it's definitely he's probably the favorite to go ahead and win this club. You think but so? The re- yeah, I think. I mean he's playing really good. You know what I mean? But and you say Ish came out of this super like over here. I'll tell you something for this to be a group play in in Shh. clubs. Between Joel, Snaponic, Ish, and uh, what's gonna call it? Uh, Krill. That's pretty wild for Krill to be because Krill. Think Krill Krill's pretty. Three. Krill's pretty cheese. Yeah, he really is. But yeah. he's Krill. Yeah. If Krill is the worst person in your club group, that club group is that pretty tough. Hell, yeah. Because Ish can play, and Snap has always been somebody that can play. Yeah. And then obviously Joel. I'm saying, and that's uh. That's definitely something that and, and Ish made it out of that. So I wanted to see Joel out of that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I think I think we all as man players want to see Joel because to Joel to is Joel one of there. one of the biggest man players, you know. I'm a, and I can tell you this about Joel is that he's legitimately like a big Steelers fan too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's that's something that I look forward to in the club series. I think it's it's a big deal. That, I mean, obviously some people, I mean, joke will go ahead and pick the easiest club to get out of. Yeah, of course, because they not they yeah. not fans, but Joel's really a. a Steelers fan. Steelers fan and we'll head in. But he got upset by Ish. And, uh, uh, I, 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 I like Deliverance. I'm not going to lie to you. I think Deliverance is going to come out of there. <laughs> you think Deli- I haven't seen Deliverance play. I think Deliverance is going to come out of there. A- A- he was the Steelers one last year. He's a Steelers fan, too. He was a Steelers one last year. I, I, I Yeah, think, that's definitely. I think he should be the favorite. I mean, Chaos ha- hasn't lost in a while, but. Uh, that's his. He won last year. He, yeah, a lot of people. Fans. A lot of people thought he was a little dark horse last year. Like yeah. he was a little Cinderella. Yeah, no, that's he was what dark he thought, horse. I'm he, saying he played pretty far. I would, nah. But you're right. Final four last year. He uh, made uh, it to. I believe, yeah, he, he made it to the final, final four, four the club series. So it's definitely yeah. So he got the experience, and I think it is a pride thing when she won it last year. You know, yeah, kind of got to win that again. Yeah, I saw so, the, I saw it in Seattle last year. Everyone counted him out too, and he he made it back. Unfortunately, he couldn't play with oh, y'all. Killer but, Mike, yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. he, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna go with him since he won last year. That's just I me. Mean, okay, say no more. I mean, like I said, I, I think it cross matches. Yeah, I think the one seed will play the two seed, and so on and so forth. Gotcha. But uh, we'll see how it goes when they actually drop these. Each one is like the. I think we can go up here and see when these clubs actually are. Ghost is so damn ugly, man. Jeez. Wasn't Arizona supposed to come out sometime? Arizona soon? is like this weekend, I believe. Sheesh. They play their Final Four before everyone else is there even it is right qualified. Here. Yeah, October 18th. So when's that? That's like Whew. this weekend. Yeah, this weekend. So we will definitely talk about that next week. And then the next one, we go week, 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 it looks like. Next week, we go ahead and we got the Vikings and Mall America, Texans, Steelers in every week. So, I mean, the Steelers and Pats back oh to back. You know what I'm saying? So, we have a lot of games. We're going to break down all the games see, and just critique the hell out of people. Yeah. Because when you're when you a Monday morning quarterback, we're going to Monday morning quarterback the hell out of these games. Definitely. So, make sure y'all bring y'all A games at these. So, what did we just – we went over the uh, Steelers. Yes, we did. So, like I said, I like chaos in that match and in, in that, that four. That's but fair. At the end of the day, Ish, Ish made it out of the hell group, so he's Ish definitely, definitely a little, made it out of the hell group. And we go with the with the Patriots. Obviously, Skimbo down here. Got to be the favorite. Yeah. I think he played this journey, this bomb guy in the group. In the group. Is, is that the guy he lost to? It had to be the guy he lost to. 
They had to because Shut It Down was the winner out of that group. And Skimbo and, and he made it out. He had to, That had to be the guy he lost to, I think. Yes. I believe this is the guy Skimbo lost to. Jordan is bomb. But like I said, it's probably going to cross match. Got you. I watched him play the guy. He he, he shouldn't have lost to the Jordan is bomb guy. Got you. But he's he's really preparing for these guys over here. Okay. You know, when Skimbo gets on prepare mode, he's a nerd. I'm saying he's definitely <laughs> – so he's definitely ready. Yeah. He definitely has the advantage as it comes to, um, you know, the, the experience and, yeah. and what's it going to be like to play under those lights and so on and so forth. It's definitely uh, – got to put the edge in his favor playing yeah, against these I, – I believe, obviously, all these other three guys is their first time in, at 11, yeah. whether they be young. I believe this guy, Jay Wall, is a young boy. I believe okay. he's like 17, 18. Wow. Kid. Kids are scary. Now I let it lose. Yeah, kids are scary. They have no responsibility. <laughs> yeah. They have nothing to lose, especially playing against Skimbo, man. I, and I'll tell you honestly, in Man Bowl when I won, okay, I had 120. Even when I played Hollywood. Okay. Right? Hollywood's like, it's like nobody expect me to win this game. You yeah. know what I mean? It's no it's no shame in losing this game. So it's like you could just play. You yeah, just, do your thing, You know, man. it's no pressure on you, really. And then when I play, I play Skimbo. And nobody's expecting me to win this game. Yeah. I mean, well, there's no shame in that. Then I play Prime. It's like nobody's expecting yeah. me to win this. What does I mean? So whoever plays Skimbo in the first round, whether it be Tiski or Jay Wall, it's like nobody's expecting me to win this game. Yeah. And Skimbo's the complete opposite. He's going to be sweating under his Patriots jersey, <laughs> and he's going to be nervous <laughs> as hell. You know, so it's, it's definitely, I mean, to be Skimbo is a, a positive, but it's also a negative at the same time, you know. So we'll see, we'll see. But obviously, I mean, you gotta like Skimbo. He's just super prepared, and uh, really executes well. He really, I mean, obviously hasn't played a super bad game at a lot of it in a while. So we'll see. I don't remember. I don't remember the worst game I've ever. I don't. I can't think of the worst game I see Skimbo play. Oh, I know a lot of worst games I've seen, seen Skimbo play. You seen play? I, I mean, at a live event, I haven't seen. What's the live? What's the worst live event? Well, he lost game? a beast mode. He lost a belt to beast he mode. He did. He did. He did in that finals, yeah. I I played him in that final. I played him in the group stage. Yeah. And the difference between when I played him in Madden Bowl and I played him in in the Madden Challenge, which was probably about two months apart. Yeah. He was so good at checking the ball down. Yeah. Because when I played in Madden Bowl, he was just in love with zone throwing Z spot, getting 40 yards of play. But the difference between him and the two months was I got to throw to my tight end flat for four and eight yards. Yeah. And when he played beast mode, he got stuck back in. I want to throw the spot. So that was the, that was your worst game. And honestly, him. he played that game. He played that. He had never played better than all the games leading up to that beast mode game. And then he just like laid. Down. Yeah, I that, I I thought he played great that whole that whole. Th- it was the third one, the third um draft champs. Mm-hmm. I, I man, I thought he played great the whole time, mm-hmm. and he lost to him. But that that probably is his worst game you've seen. Worst yeah. game, and then I mean last year he lost in ultimate league to Blocky. I thought mentally he was. Never prepared to play, but he was prepared. But he was so like nervous about it, about yeah. it. Like he over, oh my gosh, his defense is so good. He could be on aggressive. I don't know how to stop him. Like, bro, relax. And I maybe, thought he was mentally out of those games. Maybe just me. I just don't hold last year against none of y'all. <laughs> it's just, yeah, last it's hard to brutal. judge y'all from last, last year. Last year was brutal for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you gotta make the best of it, really. But uh, yeah. so that's that's the Patriots. I said we'll see how it goes. And yeah. this is in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So well, the last one is the Eagles. You know, the Eagles is tough. I mean, we got Slim. That's our guy. Slim come to all the events here. Come to all the yeah. little backyard tournaments. Yeah. Play, played with Slim a lot. Played against him a lot. Six? Yeah, for six sure. Six been playing since. Yeah, for sure. Golly, for six? For sure. For sure. Yeah, so. Sheesh. Slim definitely. This is Slim Chance. I mean, he, I mean, he said the last two years he said he's going to pop up. So he finally got a chance, and, and that's Figgy down there below the, the obviously the uh, the Eagles reigning Rain club champion. champion. Yeah. So we'll see how he does. I think they're gonna cross match. I, I did talk to this guy Noonan. I talked to Noonan. I talked to him. He said he's ready. Yeah, he's prepared. You know what I'm saying so. We'll see. It's nice to see these young guys go out here and get a chance. This is another group where I say, golly, I'm getting on PlayStation. You supposed to be up here on the list. You know what I'm saying. I wish. Rock could have made this list, honestly. <laughs> Rock might have could have made this list with I form, I form, and, and then play action corner route to the tight end. He could have made this list. And I wish I could I could have come in it this year. Man, I, I can't. Hot one eagle dot made it that far. I, wow. That's your man. That's your man, uh, Eagles Nation. Uh, I, wow. 
Hey, man, Pat Sell can take people a lot of ways, man. I see. Wow. But yeah, that, that's... I, I think Figgy's a favorite. Oh, yeah, right for at. sure. We, I mean, you got to go ahead and make, make Figgy the, uh, yeah. the favorite by... Yeah. Pretty Figgy. much by default. Like I say, he's been there before. I mean, he's always kind of playing on the low. Another guy with a creep name, and nobody wants to see what he does. I actually had to text him. I texted him like two days ago, like, which one name are you, dude? Are you on PlayStation <laughs> 1? I had no idea who he was. <laughs> You know, I mean, he's, I, I mean, did you sneak over the PS4 side? Yeah, like which one of these, which one of these three dudes are you, man? You know, so. But like I said that's definitely we're gonna be pay attention to those games, yeah. critique the hell out of what people do because we're gonna have the EA streams, we'll be able to break them down. So make sure y'all play y'all best man out Please. there because I will critique everything you guys do and tell you, and we will tell you what we would have done and what we hadn't done. I mean, and one of the approaches I want to get into is just streaming in general and and the difference approaches that people take gotcha you know i have skimbo and joel as two polar opposites of people that um that pretty much one streams a lot joel yeah. i'm saying he he's a, like a showman you know i'm saying he wants yeah. to put on a show and that's a good thing definitely you know it's definitely different people's angle and then i have skimbo who i had to like you know w i'm gonna give you this creep stream but you gotta log out of all your information <laughs> so nobody can trace your your account yeah, yeah. If, if there's more than four people in there i'm turning it off yeah you know i'm saying and 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 obviously, the last game he streamed was last year versus Kiv, in which he dropped all the picks and he didn't. And he wound up yeah, losing. Yeah, oh yeah. So he's somebody that doesn't stream at all. Yeah. And then I talked about Joel, not only streaming, but then he had his homies in the background watching yeah. him play Madden. Yeah. Now that's something I couldn't do, especially in that. one room. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't have nobody all in my media <laughs> space. Like I'd be telling women, like. Listen, you can't come over this weekend. I got a game to play. <laughs> like, for real. And I don't want to get to the point where it's like, yo, I got to play my game at 6. And she's still here at 5. It's like, yo, listen, what time are you leaving? Like, yeah, so yeah, I can't yeah. have – it's bad enough to stream and have to pay attention to all these assholes. Go ahead and type in the chat and wild things. But yeah. to have people next to you, I mean. So how would you always approach that? Like, would you want people watching you I don't, play? I, I, honestly, like, we was more of a – I mean, as far as online, I can't have no one around me. As far as live events, I, I – I only heard one voice. I heard 40 in my background. And mm -hmm. everyone else, I really didn't hear. I, I, too many people around me is like, I can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on the situation, too, because we gambled a lot back then. And when you gambled a lot, you had no choice but to have a bunch of people around. Mm -hmm. So you get used to it. But if I'm in my own comfort home, I don't want, I don't want too many people around me. I don't want to mm -hmm. hear the noise. I, everyone oh, yeah. always want to be a coach. Every, it, it, and it's always the mad and play. It's always the people that aren't mad and players that want to tell you someone was open here and someone was like, mm -hmm. yo, if you don't leave me alone and let me do my thing, it, it, I don't know. Because first of all, you're not supposed to coach anyway. Yeah, you're not. So, yeah, the people that That's aren't like, mad players always are the ones coaching. Way. They Hell always, yeah. they're always the ones coaching. Sure. And that's how the Twitch chat coaches. Too. The Twitch chat is just, I mean, John Madden coach pretty much. They see everybody open. They, and they see they all the adjustments X, you got to make. Square, square. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Can y'all let them play, man? Yeah. Why, why he can't cover this guy? Why he not doing that? It's like it's really hard, and, and people are there for a reason. But it's just different approaches. And, and I want to talk about some of the disadvantages. Streaming is so detrimental okay. to competing in Madden. Yeah. I think it, it is – it cannot be stated enough – and even to stream these games that people – obviously, tons of people stream, yeah. but there's still, what, 26 clubs left to beat one? Yeah. And, I, I mean, my advice to these kids is, is if you're not going to build your brand of man, I would never stream these games. There's no incentive to stream these games. And something for me, I remember when I played last year in the Man Classic and I had to go through – I remember I had to play franchise in a single elimination before I even got to the group stage. Right. And I am in, and then once I got to the group stage, so on and so forth. Anyway, once I got out of group stage, I had to play short Texas Goon. Okay. And I remember he played AKG. So I watched his stream back. And I, and after watching his past broadcast back, I knew, okay, on first down, he want to run stretch. Yeah. On second down, he want to run stretch. Yeah. And then this formation was to do this. And, and, and I remember in the middle of the day, because I think I played all them games in one day. I, I was talking to Buzz. I'm like, Yo, let's hop in practice more. I want him to stop this stretch out of this formation. Yeah. Boom, I had a box. So he couldn't run for a yard. Right. All because I watched the pass broadcast. Yeah. Whereas if we hop into a game, you're going to surprise me with that the first couple drives. Who knows? You might bust a 20-yard stretch. You must bust a 50 yards. You might score a touchdown because I wasn't prepared to stop stretch. But because I watched the pass broadcast, when I saw two tight ends, one running back, I already know the formation you're coming out in. I already know the play you want to run before I even set up my defense. So to me, it's like if – 
streaming, just, especially past broadcast, if I can go back and watch your game, yeah. that's where me as a man player, I have a super advantage over you. And that's something I really wouldn't want people to do, especially if, if you're not trying to make this a brand. If you're not trying to build to the point where you're streaming every day, it should not be something that you want to do. Yeah, I, I I watch a lot of people streams on my spare time, just sitting at home with the wife and kid, and and and, and just sitting there watching. I mean, you catch everyone's tendencies, and I'm not serious man player at all anymore, or whatever. And you still see everyone's tendencies, what they want to do in this situation, what they want to do in this situation. I know if I could catch it, people who do it every mm-hmm. day are purposely trying to catch it, and it's 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 a scary word streaming. I I know back in the day, like the way you described Skimbo was me, man. I I showed up, to, I showed up to tournaments, and you didn't have a clue what I was running, and mm-hmm. that's the, that's just the way I liked it. I don't, I didn't need you to know anything. I didn't mm-hmm. need you to see me. It's just, but some people can handle that. Some people can't. Like I respect the people who can handle it. Like like you go through it, Joel go through it. The mm-hmm. people who can, you know what's coming and they can handle it. It's it's a lot of respect to y'all because I I didn't, I didn't want you to know anything i will come to tournaments with different offenses every time so i just didn't want you to know anything yeah, but i see and to me that's that's a, a different my view is that if i'm running the same thing all the time and you know how to stop it yeah i'm going to see what you think is the best defense to stop it yeah and throughout the game i'm going to learn the best way to beat that yeah you know so i feel like i run three four plays but i feel like i've seen every single thing somebody can try to do to try to stop that yeah and i know the next step in my progression whereas nothing's really ever going to surprise me on yeah. the on defense you yeah know? like they're not going to do nothing that surprises me you know, so it's 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 a double edged sword, and I've always felt like if you know what I'm doing and you can stop it, then what I'm doing is not good enough. I hear you. You know, that's, I hear you. that's something I've always felt. And I feel like I can get better and I can improve my game. You know, get to the next level. But streaming, definitely with the, especially with the uh, coaching adjustments. If I'm streaming, I can never switch my defensive line. Never. On they catch they catch y'all all the time. It's someone always in y'all stream seeing y'all switch it, and then it gets some um, BS false start or I'm a BS off size. It's us uh, it's disgusting. Every single time it's like he, he's clearly in this chat. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I mean and it, it it's something that really weighs on your mind. And obviously you can delay your stream. Yeah. Up to five. But to me I, I use the stream so much. You know, I'll run a play and I'll look back. It's better than previous play. Yeah. You actually see the whole entire play. <laughs> I'm saying so it's like I use it a lot. So yeah. when I every time I stream, I never delayed it. Always kept it on the standard ten second delay. Gotcha. But for me, I, honestly, it's something that uh, I, if you're not going to build your brand, if you're not going to continue to stream every day afterwards, yeah, then I would never stream these games. And 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 I, I talked to Skimo about this. At the same time. These guys that are playing the games probably got boys they play with all night. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And these guys want to watch them play the game. Yeah. You know I mean, I'm about to play getting the club series. So they, they friends in the party chat want to see them play the game. Yeah. But honestly, I would keep it like like Skimbo do. Like, we be in there, just, we just be like me and him watching the game. You know what I'm saying? It's nobody nobody else. It don't really open up for everybody else. And past broadcasts have to be off at all times, man. <laughs> I actually have mine on because I'm kind of like I'm, I'm a full time streamer now. So uh-huh. it's really not a big deal to me. But if it was tournament time, I would definitely turn off the past broadcast. It's definitely something that you guys should all do. There's no, at least make the past broadcast only available to your subs. At least make them pay the $5 hours if they want to see your, your, uh, your past broadcast. But at the yeah. same time, people are scumbags. They will hit you up like, yo, are you subbed to such and such? Like, pay the $5, man. <laughs> that, it's not that deep, you know, but. So that's just some things that was streaming, and if it's all in pretty much how I go in there. And you mentioned gambling a lot. Obviously, yes. something that was huge 10 years ago. Definitely. Now, my opinion is that online pretty much killed gambling. Online killed think? it? What do you think? Um, Not necessarily. I Well, at least for the last – when I was playing, man, 2000, from 2002 to 2000 and – it it, mm-hmm. it was strong, and what killed it was people knew who to stay away from. They like the only games I would get is Secret and Problem and mm-hmm. House Shoe and Fool and Fifty Fifty ones. I couldn't you know get I couldn't get the random person who think they could beat me anymore. So it just it it was more so the name mm-hmm. your name. Like I wouldn't play for like a half a year and still couldn't get a game or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was more so the name more than online. I mean, online kind of helped it in a, in a way because everyone ran the same stuff every year. You, you, someone ran, someone found something, and then everyone stole it from them or whatever. So online kind of helped it or whatever because everyone thought they were tough, mm-hmm. and it wasn't it wasn't Twitch out here to see somebody shut it mm-hmm. down and this, that, and the third. So back then, online helped it. I think online probably hurts it now, or whatever. But back then, 
when it wasn't Twitch, some, some, someone found something out of Atlanta playbook. Everyone ran it, and everyone thought they was tough, and they'll get to a tournament, and then someone like Problem will have a 3-4 pinch thing that they never seen before and mm-hmm. kill them. So it wasn't much more line. It was more so the name. The, I, name, the I, name killed it. Yeah, I just think, like, even Players Bowl. Like, Players Bowl was for five grand, right, yeah. or something like that. It wasn't super a lot of money. Yeah. Like, we could do a five grand tournament tomorrow. Yeah. But people – People not the reason why problem and all them would fly out is they would get five hundred thousand dollar games the whole weekend. We didn't. I didn't go to tournaments for the tournament. Yeah. I would go to. I would fly out and not play in the tournament. Mm-hmm. I could care less about the tournament. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't about the tournament. It was. I was planning to make at least five thousand gambling. Like mm-hmm. I didn't care nothing about tournament. Mm-hmm. That's how it was. So what I see. That's why I think online is that all these people. Everybody plays each other. Yeah. You know, even guys gamble, even they're gambling hundred dollars, fifty dollars. Everybody yeah, plays everyone's each other. playing each other. Yeah. Whereas back then, maybe you ain't played prom, but once one other time when y'all was in, at some live event, or yeah. y'all ain't played all year. You ain't played since such all year. So this I is y'all chance. Problem. You know what I mean? I didn't talk, and every time when we got there, that's that's when it was our time to play or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying it was it was never. You know, we can play. I can hit any one of these guys up and play a hundred dollar game tonight when I get home. Yeah. You know, I think that's the big. When I say online, I think that's the difference. Whereas. Back then, 10 years ago, you only played each other when y'all saw each other. So, a, a big tournament was y'all opportunity for everybody to get together. Yeah. Whereas now, we together, you know, 24-7 via the internet and, and this, that, and the third. I think that's pretty much what's. I still I still feel it's a few, it's, it's a few people in y'all air who, who would have, who back in the day would have been like Kiv. Kiv would have been one of them people you saw at the tournament and you had to play for a lot of money. Skimbo would have been one of the people. Mm-hmm. Joel, that's why I respect that. Joel, I'm a big fan of Joel, Skimbo, Kev. I, I feel as though they're, they're, they they are those type of players, but people are too scared to do that. But now, I, I, I wouldn't, you wouldn't run in, you wouldn't want to run in the Skimbo and be like, let's play for this, that, and the third because Skimbo's not scared. He'll do it and mm-hmm. it's a big risk. But that that's how it was back in the day. It was like, I I we going I'm about to play Skimbo for this amount of money. I'm about to play Joel. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. It is that now it's everyone's online. Everyone can play this and the third is different. It's way different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's kind of what kills like the the the, uh, the local tournaments that we can have. Yeah, like there's no chance like because there's no chance in getting those guys to fly out to a tournament that, we, that you do here, even if it's for ten thousand dollars. You know they're not gonna come out here. You know that's not something that, that behooves anybody really so and that's you, what i think about all the time when we talk about obviously i talked to jimmy i talked to all these guys about doing big tournaments it's just like w- where's the incentive for everybody yeah that's what i'm saying i'll I be I, they be they be asking me advice and i'm like i honestly honestly gambling was the the whole point of the tournament gambling was the point of the tournament it was 200 to 500 of us and we the night before the tournament, we would be in a room like this, and we would be gambling the night before the tournament. Mm-hmm. The tournament, we'll gamble small. After the tournament, we'll gamble. It was the whole point. People wasn't sleeping. They was funking up the hotel rooms, not showering and nothing. Everyone was gambling. Mm-hmm. They would wake you up out of your hotel room, Gene, let's play for 500 mm-hmm. Like, like, like free, everyone, people from Texas, West Coast, they are like, yeah, we ain't see you play. Come on, let's play for 1000 It was, that's what That's what it was. It's not like that no more. Yeah. Mo was a part of it. I oh. didn't. I didn't get to play. I would. Lo- I would have loved to play Mo, but I never got to play Mo. Mo was that. Mo was one of those guys. Lou saw them. Did. Well, Mo was a gambler. Mo was a gambler. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I've met in my life. Mo, 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 yeah. Mo, Mo would have. Man, Mo. That's that's the one of the guys you would have played. You would have yeah. went in there, Mo. Let's go, man. Because Mo not scared. That's that's one of the guys. That, that, mm-hmm. that, that's all you was doing all back in the day. Yeah, for sure. But that's the that's the biggest difference. I wish it would. I and wish then, it would turn back. I, it it would it would be very difficult to impossible for it to go back. But if it was more gambling, this would be like if if say for example Joel didn't play like a Joel Rice ever or whatever. And then when they saw each other, and then they just played or whatever. It, that that's how man it would turn back. Well, how how can you? What's the steps to get to that? Um, do you think we as these top players and men need to just? I mean, start gambling. What What do you think could help the game? You know I feel saying? as though it's a lot of people that's confident in their game and and should should gamble. I, I feel as though a lot of people. I mean, it's it's a scary world because it's your money, <laughs> it's your money, so it's a yeah. scary world. But if you're that confident in your game, I feel as though you should you should definitely go at anybody. And at, at the same time. You know, obviously, say talk about Kid and Skimbo, all these guys, and never nobody ever sees play. 
Yeah. You know, they saving their stuff to win, I mean, X amount of money in the MCS. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a, re- a reserve thing for that. Like, I don't want to play anybody that I may play down the line for 40 grand. I hear you. 50 grand. I hear you, but if I come at, if I, I feel as though if I came at them and I said, let's play for this amount, they wouldn't pass it up. Yeah. But like I, I, that's how I had to. That's how I had to come at everybody. Like I came, Seeger got tired of me coming at him. It was yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to play you, and he would try to play everyone else before he played me or whatever, because mm-hmm. he was just sick, sick of me. Tired. Like that's how it is. Like if I, no matter what Skimble's trying to hide, if I say let's play for five thousand, I just don't think Skimble's going to say no. If I say let's play for two thousand, I just don't think kids going to say no. Like I just, they love money too much to be like, no, oh, whatever. So if everyone came into it with let's play this, let's play this, let's play this, I think it'll make man. Jump again as far as live events. All right. So, we talk, you talk about Secret. You said Secret a bunch. Now, I talk to Jet a lot. Okay. Now, he always talk how, how much they up on y'all. How much Florida up on Philly, man. So, so what, Florida what's up yeah, Florida. on Florida? Yeah. So, so Jet is real big. You know, Jet real big. Florida this, Florida that. Okay. Rock, rock, rock. Jet, is, Jet has the biggest mouth of man. He, he'll sell you anything. And he, Florida he talk, yeah, is up on Florida. Philly? Uh, that, that that's what I hear. So I, I need this straight now, cause I don't know. You know, back then I was I was a little run. I ain't play Madden like that when I was twenty years old. As far as um, as far as Philly, it, the only like gamblers really was me, Gooch, and Forty. Mm-hmm. Me, Gooch, and Forty was playing everybody or whatever. I, I can't comment on Gooch. Like I I don't think they were up on Gooch. Mm-hmm. I can't comment. I know. Gooch didn't like house shoe, but house shoe not from Florida. But Gooch didn't like mm-hmm. house shoe. But other than that, I can't comment. Jet's never played anybody. I <laughs> Jet's never played anybody. He never. Jet wasn't a gambler, and that's okay to not be a gambler. Yeah, but that's how I am. I don't yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. It's What's okay. It's like, hey, hey, you are you are who you are. But he, he, it was secret. That that was the only person in Florida up in Philly. That's that's not that's not a fact at all. That's not a fact. All right, so because you know I don't. I hold a lot of pride no, y'all. y'all. No, History no, that's not a no, Jet, no. Jet, like the only person who could say someone was up a secret could be like, yeah, I had advantage on this, I had advantage on this. But anybody other than the secret, I like, nah, I, no, no, nah, Florida, nah. Sheesh. Philly is the best man in place ever. It's not even close. I mean, that's how it's been. It's not mean, even that, close. I mean, you have little, like you little got, f- fraction, little yeah, you got outliers compare, all over the place. You got to compare stuff. states to Philly, like it's. And we I mean, beat every state. Like Texas is Texas is nice. Philly is over Texas. California, okay. Philly's over California. Florida, okay. Philly's over Florida. It's nothing like Philadelphia. Nothing. That's a fact. That's not even me being Philly. Me being biased. Yeah. Philly has I like mean, a bunch of EA Challenge champions. No, I mean, everything. There's nothing it's, to argue about. Yeah, it's nothing to argue about. But you know. So anyway. That's the man talk. We got to get into the NFL, man. Yes, we do. Week six. First of all, almost a week ago, the Eagles are back. Championship form once again. I don't care about who they played. It's not necessarily about that. It's about them getting back. Yeah, I don't care who they played. I don't care who they played. Also watching the game, I feel like the biggest problem this year are the tackles. Yes. The tackles simply aren't playing how they're supposed to play. How they played last year, and yeah. that kills the offense. It kills yes. drives. It causes turnovers. The one catch Aguilar caught could have easily been a book, like the first yeah. drive, and he just came back and caught he it. Got it was hit. a crazy yeah. play. That could have changed the game because it was early in the game and everything. The tackles just got to play better. The line yeah. got to play better, and I feel like they'll be all right. That's how I feel. I think both lines. That's all it is. That's that's how we won last year. Well, that's as long as both lines do what they're supposed to do, we'll be fine. If they don't, we're going to be – what I took from the game is – I love. I saw. I saw different defenses from what I seen. People jamming. I seen. Mm-hmm. I seen. I seen. I, like Mills only gave up one pass, but he was fighting even for that pass. It wasn't mm-hmm. burnt. It was someone. It was a jump ball. I could live with that all day. People were jamming. People were fighting. I was seeing different coverages out there, and and it's not like the receivers are bad. Like the Giants receivers are very good. Mm-hmm. I mean, Barkley is a beast. You can't do anything about Barkley. Barkley is unreal. Barkley is unreal. But other, than I I liked what I seen. I I hope I see it against the Panthers. I mean, I got the t- the three extra days to prepare, rest up. Yeah. You know, Peter's got this bicep injury. But, I mean, as far as Peter's been playing this year, I I, I couldn't tell the difference Big between Big I'm about B to and say. Peter's. <laughs> it, ain't really, I, you, it ain't like you really see that big of a difference. I, you know, and it's crazy because Peter's is, I mean. I don't think he's healthy. 
they could have let him sit out to like week ten or week twelve or something. Like I don't think he, I, he's he's never been like this ever. Like yeah, he's clear not like something bad. wrong. Yeah, he's never like, been he's bad. bad. I, I, I've never like, seen he's him. Never like gotten this. beat. Yeah, like like he like especially to the inside. Like they yeah. every once in a while you get speed rush around him, but Peters got beat to the inside. Yeah, a couple I've never times. seen this ever. Like and something's he, wrong. Even Lane, Lane ain't never get beat to the inside crazy. Like he's been getting heat. Something's wrong. Yeah, so they but that's pretty much the key though, because the quarterback's the quarterback. I mean, he's pretty much the biggest constant on the team right now. Yeah. Is the quarterback. The I've, quarterback and the tight end. And I mean Alshon's playing out. Why don't we run RPOs for wins? Like why don't we protect wins like we protect fools? Like fools we protect if we made sure fools was not going to mess this game up. If any if we was gonna lose, it wasn't gonna be because of fools. When uh-huh. are we ever gonna do that everyone? Wentz, they make the responsibility. I'm, of course, Wentz is the man, top five quarterback, top three quarterback. But yeah. they put, like, every once in a while, they could just simplify it for him and make him do RPOs and protect him a little bit. And I don't, I just don't think they protect Wentz at all. I just, they're like, go ahead, Wentz, do your thing. And oh, he need to protect himself. At times, yeah, too, because right, Wentz, Wentz is reckless at times. Yeah. He's wild. Yeah, he's, he's very know, reckless at times. He's super wild. So he's definitely got to tighten that up. But, but. I think they're all right, man. I don't even think as much as we want new players and shit, I don't really think they need anything. I definitely think we need a running back. What, I, I really don't want back? Clement and Smallwood as my one and two. I really don't want that. I, I kind of scores out. I kind of scores out. I really I Smallwood like is running hard. He he drops a pass a game, but he's running well, hard. Well, they can't catch. Yeah, Clement can, yeah. can kind of catch, but he's not. Yeah. He can catch, but he's not a receiver out of the backfield, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, he's not the one that's just going to isolate and beat Smallwood. Yeah. But he can catch the football. Yeah. And, but I, I just – I think if they would have got a running back, what are they waiting on? You're right. I, I, I You had the whole 10, 10 days off after this game. What are you waiting on? I, are they waiting for the price? To me, it's like if you're going, if you're going to pay a second rounder or a third rounder, you might as well pay a second rounder and so on and so forth. I'm not saying I want McCoy or – I mean, I'm not saying I want David Johnson or Bill. I mean, of course, you would want all that. But I, I want somebody else with them too. Help! I I commit. One of them is going to get hurt. They're too small. One of them is going to get hurt, and they're going to be out there by themselves. I I need three running backs here. Well, I mean, they talked about it for the last ten years in, in football. Is that yeah. the running back position is definitely something that's that's replaceable. Yeah, and we see that all the time. And so we'll see. They're playing with. I mean, just no name running backs right now. So we'll see how it goes. I think they'll be all right. I think the running back position is very, you know. You can turn it over with anybody there, but they're definitely testing that theory. I feel if they got Shady or Le'Veon Bell, that would be unreal. Course, you know, but I'm, I'm we'll not see. even asking for that. I'm asking for a backup running back to come on the team. Something, something to where we, we got three people here or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I need something. We'll see what they do to me. It's like this was the week to do something because of the extra days off. You could really incorporate a running back, and you know, it's, it's but. We'll see. I think a running back is someone that's kind of easy to incorporate. Yeah. You know, the rookies always seem to translate pretty well as running yeah. backs. So, I mean, you can, you don't have to be in the game all the time. You can be in the game 30% of the time, you know, and run certain plays to stand third. So, we'll see what they do. I thought it was going to be this week, but right now they're standing pat. I right. think they're certainly going to stand pat. The safety position, they're putting everybody back there. Kind of a mad move, putting Maddox yeah. back there. Let me get my anybody. guy with the fastest speed, put yeah, him back there. Anybody. And and to me as a man player, it's like, damn, we got this this guy. He's fast. Let's, and, and he looks kind of fast out yeah. there. He, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, oh, he kind of getting into the football. Because yeah. McLeod, I love McLeod because he yeah. never made plays, but he he was always in the right spot. That's all I wanted. Always took good angles, always tackled. They didn't give up big runs. That's what I remember we was having a conversation about Kendricks. And he was just like, he's just back up line back. And I'm like, I get it. But you, es- I know what to expect from him. Like he's doing it for Seattle, I know what to expect from him. Yeah. He's just going to make the tackle. He's going to do what he's supposed to do. He's nothing special, nothing crazy, not a pro bowler. He's just going to do what he's supposed to do. That's all I care about. Mm-hmm. And who's that, your that, that's McLeod. who's your biggest um, winner for week six and your biggest biggest or, or your most disappointing team that you watch? Team, yeah, biggest. The only most, most, most disappointing impressed. team is easy. Oh. That's my Jacksonville Jaguars. Jack- oh, my God. How sick were you watching that game? Oh, my. I turned it off after the second quarter. Because I'm when they, when they got 24 points, I said, there's no way Blake Bortles is going to put up 24 points. Because, you know, I sit here every week, and I troll on Twitter, and I said, it's time to laugh at the Cowboys. Yeah. I thought this was prime laugh at the I, Cowboys. I week. just knew they was going to score three points. I knew they was going to lose 20-3. to three, And I just knew this was like, oh, my goodness, this is, this is going to be fun. 
I was so disappointed in Carolina versus Washington, but you can see Washington beating Carolina, so so I wasn't yeah. too shocked. They they like they like even teams on Jacksonville. I like ser- this game is over yeah. in the first half. Jacksonville definitely let me down. I, I mean, they couldn't stop them. And my Browns let me down. I was at the Browns game and they got flooded. <laughs> it was bad. I, I I got there in the second quarter because I was late. Yeah. And I think I left in the second quarter. It happened that fast. So I got tickets. <laughs> Literally was there for like a quarter. Bought a bunch of drinks and was there for like a quarter to see the Browns play. It was and was uh, Yep. And then you know what I'm saying? After I leave the Browns game, you know what? At least I got the Cowboys to laugh at. And the Cowboys actually won a game. And I got to hear about how Dak is, is just, you know, this good. And Oh, man, oh my God. I was disgusted. Yeah. Uh, so. I literally, until you said the answer, I literally totally forgot about that. Like yeah. that, that, oh, my goodness. That, but then, I mean, we got to talk about, I mean, probably the two best quarterbacks playing right now, probably playing in the last 10 years, yeah. and Brady is the best. Yeah. And, and and Rodgers, obviously, and those two guys had huge fourth quarters. Two great games, really, yeah. honestly. As much as to, to tell me that Sunday night and Monday night is going to be watchable is pretty pretty rare nowadays. Yeah. And both of them games, and the Chiefs and the, uh, the, Chiefs and the Patriots went back and forth. Obviously, the Chiefs are super exciting to watch. Those guys look like they're gonna be around for a while. The the Chiefs look like they got so many weapons. The man. Eagles need some more players. It would look that, like they got so many weapons. But I don't think they had that many more weapons than the Eagles. It's just Tyree Kill is just no, they got, he's different. They got so many weapons. They got they have three. They got no. Nah, they got Hunt is a weapon. That's one. Hill is a weapon. That's two. Kelsey's a weapon. That's three. The other guys are replaceable. He's one on one. Watkins, 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 one on one is Watkins and Conley. I mean, Watkins and Con- that's one on one. That's I, I, I like Watkins one on one. Well, Watkins and Conley are certainly better than uh, Jordan Matthews. Oh and, yeah, definitely. And Jamar, uh, Kamar Aiken, definitely. That's what we have right here. But it's just Tyreek Hill is just. I mean, I've always said Devin Hester and Deshaun Jackson are people that just really stood out as being the fastest player on the field and nobody else could catch them. But Tyreek Hill is – I think he's scary. took that to another level of speed because he just – it's its unreal, especially with Mahomes is playing. I mean, he's, he's playing like the sky's the limit. Andy Reid got another fast receiver, man. Like, so, yeah. Oh, my goodness. But, that's, that's all he needed. When we talk about Andy Reid, I want to talk about a huge play in that game, and it's going to a segment that we're going to run every week. Got you. And it's called What Would a Man Player Do? Because I get so mad, as you do, at these NFL teams and okay. the way they handle a lot of things that we are way better than them at handling. Yes. And people on Twitter, they don't believe me when I tell them that we are way better at handling way these better. situations. Way better. Than NFL coaches. And the NFL teams, it would behoove them to hire somebody like myself to go and sit down and, and really consult some of these coaches and some of just to Decisions they make that are just un- unreal, it's crazy, and, just, and and really, if they could adapt some things that we do as man players, it could it'll, improve it'll, NFL uh, games. Because they're great coaches, they go draw up great plays, and their time management and their decision making in certain situations is like, man, like they make me feel like a genius at times. I don't yeah. get it. Yeah, for sure. And the two instances I want to give you guys now: Andy Reid, who obviously we lived through over a decade yeah. of frustration Shh. and. And, I, and I'm glad that I'm 31, and yeah. when Andy Reid started, I, I really wasn't that aware of what the hell was going on at first. Okay. You know, obviously the Super Bowl pissed anybody off because yeah. of the speed they were going. But now that I look back at the Super Bowl, I say they needed to score a touchdown. At the Super Bowl, I, would, I wasn't really mad at Andy Reid. Because the drive where they took, they were taking their time. It was so paramount that they scored a touchdown yeah. that they had to make sure it was great. Because yeah. if they didn't score a touchdown on the drive, the game was all the way cooked. You know, so they had to make sure they scored a touchdown. You know, because a lot of fans are idiots. Yeah. You know, I I mean, I'm not, you know, Vince Lombardi. Yeah. But a lot of fans are idiots. And a lot of people on Twitter are super idiots, especially (laughs) some of the people I follow that I think are smart. But they are so football stupid, especially time, uh, just not necessarily time management, because obviously I think everybody's stupid at that. Yeah. But just the game management. And I want to bring you guys to this. If we go to this, Dre, we could go to Let me see this that. is the Chiefs and the Patriots, man. Gotcha. This was the Sunday night game, which was crazy. Yeah. Which was probably, I mean, one of the games of the year, obviously, already. Yeah. And this is the, I believe, the, yeah, the third quarter. All right. So you see the game is already 27 to 19. And the third quarter is three minutes left in the, uh, two minutes left in the third quarter. Right. So you got almost 20 minutes of football left to play. Right. So even if the teams milked out, had long drives, you're going to guarantee yourself you're going to get the ball back at least exactly. twice. Exactly. You're going to get the ball back at least twice. Exactly. So twice that could be 14 points, that could be 6 points, exactly. it could be 10 points, yeah. it could be 11 points, whatever it may be. 
So what happens is it is the, the Chiefs are now down by eight. Yes. What happens is they throw the ball underneath, as you see, yeah. Sammy Watkins, whoever. And what they're going to do here is go ahead. They're going to play cover one, and for some reason, at some point, the safety has to cover Tyreek Hill. <laughs> but nevertheless, so what happens here is that the Chiefs go ahead and score a touchdown. Right. Right? Right. And all of Twitter – Go for two. Andy Reid's so stupid. Go for two. Dude, go for two right now. Go for two right now. Why are you taking away points? It's why, not, it's why, why for would me. You t- why would yeah. you risk taking away points at that moment? It's not like the Patriots are scoring on them. It's not like I get if you don't feel as though you could get down to the red zone anymore or whatever, mm-hmm. and you got to tie this game right now. Like some some teams, they finally get down there. It takes them forever to get down there. They finally get down there. It's fourth and one, and they're like, no, we're not kicking. We're I get it, but they were moving the ball on them consistently. There's mm-hmm. no point in going for two right there, in my opinion. For sure. My – the way I think, I always hope for the best, but I prepare for the worst. Yeah. So when I see a two-point conversion situation, I always say to myself, what's going to happen if I don't get this? Not, yay, I got it. Let me tie the game. It's pretty much I have to prepare for the worst-case scenario. Yeah. And the worst-case scenario for me is not getting that, and now I'm down two points. So now the Patriots drive down the field. They and score they a touchdown. And touchdown, and they're up nine. And, the game, and I'm cooked. Now yeah. I'm shit out of luck. Now I can't run regular offense because I know I need two possessions to win this yeah. game. I need two possessions to tie this game. So now I have to play at a super pace, mess up my whole momentum, mess up my entire view on, on how I'm going to play offense. Yeah. And, all, I mean, so my, my philosophy is just always keep yourself in the game with yeah. one possession if you can be in that possession. And you have to prepare for the worst. Not only am I preparing for – not getting this two-point conversion, I'm preparing for the Patriots going down and scoring seven. You know, whereas if I'm down one and the Patriots go down and score seven, now I'm down eight, I'm still in the game. You yeah. know, and I'll get to I'll get to that two-point conversion if I need to get to that two-point conversion, but I don't want to do it right now. I don't want that much riding on one play this early in the game. It's a lot of scenarios why you shouldn't go for two. It's like it's like they're not stopping you. You're mm-hmm. not stopping them at all. Nope, especially not in the So, if quarter. you go down two, you have to expect them to score seven, which means you're down two possessions or whatever. It's not like like it's not like you're comfortable enough to be like, oh, well, if I'm down two, they, they're not getting no more than three against us. So, we, mm-hmm. no, they, you're not stopping them at all. It's like everything says not to go for that, and sometimes you just can't listen to Twitter. It's like, seriously, you yeah. really would go for two? Like, Everybody on Twitter why? wants to go for two every time. Like, for what's, what's the point of going for two there? Yeah, and it gets to the point where it's so many possessions after this where they argued about – you know, when you should go for two and when you shouldn't, that it, it got to the point where you could start arguing that you should go for two every time. You know, that's how people get to it. No. Yeah, so, I mean, and it came down to now, I think the Patriots, what happens is they kick a field goal, boom, yeah. so now they're up four. Yeah. Whereas if I didn't get that, if I didn't get that two-point conversion and they kick a field goal, now they're up five. Yeah. Or, or so on and so forth. And then I have to get a touchdown, and then a two-point conversion and be up three. So what happens is now is that the Kansas City Chiefs are down four, they're going to go down and score a touchdown, and so they're now up they're three. up three. Yeah. You know, and then, then Patriots Everything go, the same thing happens, the happens, 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 happens. And then people say, well, by the end of the game, they say, well, now they could have got a field goal and won the game. But like I said, if, it, if it's spread out within three or four possessions, then you can make the argument that you might as well just go for two every time. Yeah. And that's a whole argument that, that college coaches and high school coaches talk about all the time. And we've seen the Steelers. That was over, though, by the way. Well, definitely was over. No, he was definitely <laughs> going to ball for him, huh? Tyreek Hill just out of nowhere came and got the football. Because Tyreek Hill is special. But, and that's the argument that we see the Steelers go for two a lot. Yeah. You know, really just uh, really put the pressure on the other team. And, and it does. But as far as I'm concerned, if you're on the road, you're playing the Patriots, you want to keep yourself in the game as long as possible. And we see, I think they had 12 points. Andy Reid kept kicked Buku field goals in the first half. And yeah. people were killing him. Oh, he wants to keep the game close. He's just going to lose. I. I swear to God, I'm, Twitter makes me so mad watching football games sometimes. And people just, oh, well, why is he kicking so many field goals? You just got to give yourself an opportunity to be in a game in the fourth quarter. And they and weren't having any success in the red zone when he was kicking the field goals. It wasn't like they was, like, scoring whenever they want. They would get to the mm-hmm. red zone and get stopped every single time or whatever. Like, I get it. I was disgusted that this guy didn't tackle. Like, oh, you really didn't. But do you think he stopped? Do I think he stopped? I, I feel as though you should, like, if he felt as though, like, I don't know. He said he felt as though Brady didn't have a ball and this, down the third. I'll take the penalty every time. That's just me. I, I'm not mad at uh, defensive players taking a penalty anymore. Yeah. Like, you, can't, you can't change because of these rules. I mean, the rules are what the rules are, but not in this, especially in this, in a red zone. Like, what can you lose? You get another first down and try again? Like, I'm not. Nah, this is unacceptable. Yeah, for sure. And that's why I said I commented that pretty soon it's going to be like practice mode. Where as yeah. soon as you, like, buy a quarterback, they're going to blow the plate dead. You know, they're not going to let quarterbacks – they're not going to let Big Ben, Cam Newton, and Carson Wentz do what they do because, I mean, it's just – it's not going to be fair the way that they call the games and stuff. 
And we see that the Patriots are still up four points. Gronk is crazy. I think they hold him to three here. Yeah, they hold him to three. They hold him to three. Definitely hold him to three. Well, let's hold him. Damn, they hold him to three. And then this is just the easiest touchdown I've ever seen a person run. Ever. The Patriots. Oh, good job, 20, 21. Is, you had a shot. The Patriots defense is so bad when they play Andy Reid or Doug Peters. It's like, man, like. They know something that everyone else don't know. Like, every time Andy Reid played them, they put up 40. I mean, you ain't lying. I thought they played good in the Super Bowl. Evan McNabb, two passes that he just – two worth passes of his life. Man, I hated that first half. The first half was is the thing that uh, bothers me the most, man. Yeah, because I thought they I thought they played – I thought McNabb played his best game, but then he had some of the worst passes of his life. He played really good. In the, but that was McNabb. Yeah, that's McNabb, yeah. Shit. And 40-40, this is another play that – you have n- one this time play out. right here. This play. Yep. You got to carry him in the end zone right here. Why Why is he trying to tackle him? Why isn't he I, pushing I guess him? It's just, why isn't he point, pushing him? At some point, it becomes second nature to just tackle him. No. Nah. But at some point after he catches the ball, you got to have the wherewithal to go ahead and carry him in the end zone. That's the only shot you have getting the ball back. You have no timeouts. They're on the 10-yard line. He should be pushing him, like, escorting him in, like. And we all know Gronk dumb enough to run right in the end zone anyway. <laughs> Gronk would have just ran in. Gronk spiked it, and you would have had 40 seconds in the timeout to go ahead and get a touchdown. But anyway, they go ahead and lose the game right there. But that's just an example of – see, and that's Skimbo said in the chat, field goals are never guaranteed in real life. At some point, I have to – I have I'm to guarantee gi- a field goal. I'm giving you, know, you that I have touchdown. To believe, I have to believe that you're going to make this field goal. It's, yeah, especially with New England. I'm giving you and that. And Goskowski. Yeah, you know, I'm giving I think you that. Sometimes you got to know your personnel. They say that in basketball all the time, know your personnel. I'm giving you that. Goskowski. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, that's pretty much uh, the next one I want to show you guys is just the defense, just the game, man, we talked about earlier, <laughs> b- between the Niners and the Packers that allowed Aaron Rodgers for this crazy comeback. And this is the kickoff after it was 30-30. to and right here we see the pack. Call. We get the the unnecessary roughness out of crazy bounds. Call. Boom! That gives them 15 extra. They're pretty much you need 15, 20 yards for, for 15, field goal range. 20 yards. You have all the time in the world in three timeouts. Especially got the third and three. They didn't really run the ball like you said. They didn't Kyle run any of the clock. He passed three. T- okay, granted they were moving the ball in Green Bay, but you got to know who your quarterback is. You got to know who you're going against. He passed three times, three straight. Times is no way he should have at least ran one time, take 40 seconds off. They have all three timeouts. They have all three times. There's no reason why the Niners should be rushing. Because pretty much they got Robbie ran, Gold, that kicker. They could have ran that third and three play with 18 seconds on the clock. Rather than yeah. the, it would have been the same thing, essentially, to get in the field goal. They right. were literally rushing. And Robbie Gold was, is is the man. He was, he was knocking everything down today. And you really can't you really can't waste time. Like At I'm the not, same time. No matter who the quarterback is, you gotta feel comfortable. There's, there's no on the nine yard line with no timeouts and a minute left. I, if it's Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady, I do not feel comfortable. And with a tied game, yeah. If, if they need seven, okay. With a tied game, nah, I do not feel comfortable at all. I mean, look at my man all day right look here. Look at this, man. This is crazy. Like. But that's okay because they have thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, no timeouts. For him to even get to the line here, he's gonna be it's gonna be eighteen seconds left, yeah. probably. So this is where I say you have to have some see, I'm calling a timeout after or after the spike. You you have to have some situational Look defense. Look at this. And my point I say to this, Aaron Rodgers knows he probably has three plays left in this game right now. Three why plays. Why are these three people right here? Like why? Why? That's my point. So, if he's dropping back, he's like, you know, I have three plays right now. I got to throw them all to the sideline. Yeah. Or if I'm going to use the middle of the field, it's going to be this play because that's the only time I can get down and spike the ball. Right? That's the only time with 18 seconds. That's all I have. So, to me, if I'm on defense, one, I have a special package where, one, I'm not rushing four people. And I'm damn sure not having these two yellow zones right here just chilling Why in the, in the middle of the field. Like, like, is he really going to throw in the middle of the field? Because I feel like Aaron Rodgers, whether there's pressure on him or not, is going to get rid of this ball in four Regardless. seconds. So my point is these four guys rushing the quarterback aren't doing anything to dictate this They're play because he is going to get rid of the ball because he knows he's up against the clock. He knows that he's throwing the ball out of bounds. So to me, I'm rushing two 
or three people at the most. Because I know he's going to get rid of the ball. I'm going to have the pretty much quarters three deep, but I want to have all my inside guys in flat zones. So I can have man on the outside, but then seven flat zones. Yeah. I'm begging and, him to scramble and, and slide. Like, I'm begging, I'm I'm begging, begging him, him to I'm begging him to waste ten seconds. Yeah. So he only has one play left. Like, it's no way. Why oh, are they in the middle of the field? And they literally one-on-one on the outside. And we go ahead and allow that little dump off. For what? And that's, I mean, and that's where I would have my heart flat. And my cloud flat would have been behind him, and my man coverage would have been there. But I re- and people think it's crazy, like fag these unrealistic, and it is because nobody runs it. But even if you didn't rush anybody, uh-huh. right? And he wait, and A Rod says, "Damn, they're not rushing anybody." All he can do is hold for the whole ten and then throw a hell mary at some point. You know what I mean? So it's like, like, what's the downside of not rushing anybody on that play? That's what I want to know. And here we go again. Fifteen seconds, no timeouts. Look at we this. are in two man under. This it might even be cover one, depending on what this guy does. This is what it is. is man coverage. You have Sherman on Devontae Adams, which he did. I think he did that in the last drive. Yeah. I don't think he was, was going no, to the last the drive. When, when Adams scored At, the um, previous drive, he said he wasn't He wasn't letting Adams do it. And anymore. I feel like he did that shit on his own. Because yeah. you remember seeing him on the field, he's like, no, I got him to get out the way, blah, yeah. blah, So that And this is pretty much where I would certainly go ahead and I would be in some type of two-man. Or Like I said, I, there's no point in rushing anybody. He has to get rid of the ball right away. Because if he sits in the pocket and gets to 10 seconds and throws the ball in the middle of the field, they can't get up and spike the ball. Yeah. Now, we know in Madden, you need like eight to seven seconds to call field goal. Yeah. And that's nah, if you're nah, ready to do it right away. Yeah. And NFL, you can't do that. So, to me, I, the, like I said, these four guys or whoever they rush, what are they doing? You know, what? What? this Y'all is why I say – the defense needs situational fag D where all these guys, instead of being DNs, go ahead and be a flat zone over yeah. there. You know, and what happens is they actually throw this back shoulder over here. To Beautiful this. throw. Yeah. Fast, just, everything. is what. The, but and this, why is the corner that far inside? Of, why? There's no chance. There's no chance I'm playing that far inside of the wide receiver when all they can do is run an out route anyway. That's all they can do. And it's to the point where if they're going to run the in route, and this point is this is just insulting. This is, yeah, like this once was again, like we're just in unnecessary. Two like they really just. <laughs> now, honestly, there in that situation is where you like, all right, I'm sending everybody because you're already yeah, in field a, goal yeah, range. you're already in field goal range. You might as well blitz everybody. Yeah, and it's like, to me, it's like, you know, and let's come said they don't, they don't necessarily. We feel like. Field goals are guaranteed. Because yeah. man players, you get a field goal range, it's guaranteed. Field yeah. goals have been way too easy in Madden since the beginning of Madden, yes. honestly. Yes. So, but in real life, a lot of shit can go wrong. Yeah. But so we see is, oh, you're in field goal range, that's three points, the game's over. So when you're at the 28-yard line, I am going to blitz the crib. I am going to try to get a sack. But at the same time, you have to give that quarterback enough credit to know he's smart enough not to take a sack in this situation. Man, so Rogers, man. to me, I think that they would have been better off rushing nobody. After that first run play, they would have been better off rushing nobody, making him waste time, making him run the clock out. And that's what I would have did defensively in Madden. And that's that's pretty much what the difference is between Madden players and, and defensive coordinators in the NFL. And that's the segment I want to try to bring pretty much out of, out of the primetime game so we can bring these highlights from them and stuff yeah. and talk about, you know, what uh, – what man players would do differently than these NFL coaches, you know. What? That's all. So we went over I said we went over the club series. Yeah. We went, we talked about streaming. We talked about gambling. Yeah. We talked about NFL week six. Yeah. My man Rock is still not here. Like still I said, he was asking for gambles at like five o'clock on MWS. Seriously? Yes. Yes. Seriously? I, I so you know, when I go to text y'all, I see my family Rock has posted in MWS. He's probably posted right now. You know what I'm saying? Asking for gambles, and I said he either, he either gonna burn that person or he ain't gonna show up. <laughs> so it's hard to go ahead and, and man put the stream together when Rock more worried about his ten dollar <laughs> game that he's not gonna pay anyway. So pretty much, you know, for the betterment of the podcast, I want y'all to go ahead and stop playing Rock for ten dollar games. He's not gonna pay y'all. You know what I'm saying wow, it's at not five o'clock. He's asking for five dollars. No, Rock be up at all hours of the night in MWS about game. Crazy. <sighs> it, it, so that's pretty much how rock is. But like I said, we're gonna do money. We're gonna do what would a man player do? That's gonna be a segment we're gonna get into every single week. Talk about how we could make an NFL team better. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get a job out of this, so I can yeah. stop worrying about subs and, and ebooks and stuff like you that. Need go, a job out you know what else I said to it? What if the Cowboys hit me up and said, "Come on, work for us"? No, I couldn't do it. I'm and, so- and you can help the Cowboys win. I couldn't do it. What's the price tag to work any, for the Cowboys? Any team but them. If the Giants and the Skins did them, uh, It's different. There's uh, a different vibe for the Giants and the Skins. No. 
I, 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 and I thought stuff. about it like, what could the price be for me to go? I mean, of course, it's always a price, but uh, the thought of it is like, uh. Because I figured this wouldn't be a crazy paid job right away. It'd probably be like a little internship at first. And they need help. <laughs> I think every team <laughs> needs help. And yeah. honestly, I think Doug is halfway decent at this shit. Yeah. I really don't think Doug is a bad I think he's smart. I think in the Super Bowl time, Brady never should have had the ball back. Never. I, I don't blame that on Doug. That was on a like Aguilar Nelson ran went out, out of bounds. bounds. Yeah. And I, I flipped shit in the crowd. Yeah. I don't, and then Urs dove in there. Yeah. But at that point, by the time Urs dove, you couldn't really run the whole clock out yeah, anyway. It was over. Really put that they thing still had timeouts. They was going to get the ball back once and, they were going to go In hindsight, it worked out better. Yeah. Because, you know, it went down in history a little bit, had some better plays, more memorable plays. Yeah. But I was pissed about that because yeah. I thought that, I thought for sure there's one. When Nelson went out of bounds, I said this. That is, that, you, that was this the exact is, play that ended is, it. Because if he gets his crazy. little seven and falls down, the game is over. Yeah. So that so this is going to be our segue. What would a man player do is going to be our segue so we can present to the NFL team so we all have jobs in the NFL because they're so. stealing shit that we put on the map ten years ago. Oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. The game is changing. They, they they stealing a lot of shit. The game is definitely changing. But. Anyway, that concludes the podcast. Week two. This was week two podcast. Yes. Going to do this every single week. Bring y'all good. He, please, blah, blah. please hit the like button. Please hit the comment button. Comment below what y'all would like us to talk about. And we'll continue to do it for y'all. I really appreciate y'all. For my man Gene, we out of here.